Hi, welcome to the 14-day weather forecast. We've had a few somewhat colder days recently, but how are things looking during the next two weeks? As usual, I'll start by taking a look at the view across Europe and the North Atlantic. The animation runs from 18 GMT, Tuesday the 8th. At the outset, it's a wet picture in the west of the UK, but generally drier in central and eastern areas. To an extent, I think that sets a theme quite nicely for going forwards because there will be outbreaks of rain at times in all parts of the UK, but it looks as though the wettest conditions are often likely to be in the west. As we go through the first weekend, there's a nasty area of low pressure here approaching. It's bringing heavy outbreaks of rain to much of Ireland and western uh, England, as well as Wales. Strong winds associated with it too. But if I run the animation further, what happens is that area of low pressure moves away northwards rather than pushing eastwards because we've got a big area of high pressure which is really slowing the Atlantic progression. That's to our east. And by the end, 21 GMT, Tuesday the 15th, it's wet in the northwest, but further south it's looking mostly dry. What all that correlates to in terms of air mass temperatures, here's the animation, I'm going to run it very quickly. To begin with, it's mostly greens across the UK, there's some very warm air just to our south. And through the week, it's mainly greens that stay over the UK, a little bit of blue at times. But generally, it looks as though the upper air temperatures are going to be close to or above the average for much of a period across most of the UK. Nothing particularly cold there. Therefore, the two metre temperatures that we can expect, often close to or above the average. Here's an example, 15 GMT, Thursday the 10th. 12 14 Celsius in central and eastern England, cooler as you head northwestwards. It will, of course, be varying from day to day, sometimes a little bit lower than this, but these are quite in indicative, I think, of the week as a whole. The frost risk will be much lower than it has been recently, but not completely uh, negligible. 06 GMT, Saturday the 12th. Temperatures down to 1 Celsius in the Scottish Glens and parts of Wales. Twos, or twos and threes across much of southern and central England there. So still a risk of patchy frost on some nights, but I think, as I say, it will be less widespread than it has been recently. The Mogreps temperature ensemble plot for London shows things quite well. Double figures on most days, according to most of the individual runs, within it. Uh, the frost risk, as I say, in southern England is looking much reduced. Minimums overnight, 5 Celsius, even higher on some nights there. Perhaps just as we go towards the middle of the month, there are a few colder runs appearing there, suggesting that we're not certainly not done with the risk of frost yet. It shouldn't be in March, of course. Comparable plot for Glasgow. Maximums a little bit lower, but still close to double figures on most days. Overnight minimums also a little bit lower, so a greater chance of frost on some nights. So mildest in the south, coolest in the north, and that's where the chance of frost remains the highest overall. It's worth just taking a look at the wind gust forecasts as well. The London plot here. Suggest quite, quite breezy conditions, 30 miles an hour on a number of days, and the possibility of it turning significantly windier later on. At least a few of the individual runs within the ensemble are suggesting that. Glasgow, it's windier. Instead of 30s, we've got 40s. And later on, there are a number of runs bringing in very strong winds, but it is at this range just something to keep an eye on. I think it, the, the thing to bear in mind is because we've got that high pressure block centered just to our east, weather fronts and disturbances moving in from the Atlantic, it's, there is a possibility of it being quite a squeezed pattern and that would lead to the chance of strong winds at times. Also, it's worth not ruling out the possibility of that pressure block will be just a little bit further east. If that happens, 
weather fronts could become slow moving over the UK and in turn that would lead to a wetter pattern in all areas. But taking, in, taking things at face value, here are the rainfall forecasts for days 0 to 5. On the left, it's from the European ECM model. On the right, the chart is from the GFS. Fairly consistent across, the, across both of the charts. For wettest conditions in the north and the west, driest in central and eastern counties where rainfall totals are below 10 millimetres. Going forwards to days 0 to 10, ECM on the left again, GFS on the right. The profile remains similar, wettest in the north and the west. Rain amounts in central and eastern England stay quite low. So, do the other deterministic models show a similar pattern to the GFS at the end of the first week? Just to recap, here is the GFS. High pressure centered to the east of the UK. Atlantic weather fronts probably moving across the northwest primarily. So the driest conditions in the south and the east. The Canadian model shows something similar. The high pressure there centered to the east. The German icon is consistent as well. The European ECM, there are some differences, but broadly speaking, it's a similar setup. Finally, the UK Met Office. Well, this one looks a little bit different. There's a trough over the UK suggesting a greater chance of rain in all areas with low pressure systems having more influence. I think on balance though, I'm going to say that the of the, the majority of the deterministic models are likely to be close to a mark. Therefore, high pressure centered to the east of the UK, disturbances pushing in from the west, wettest conditions being in Northern Ireland and Western Britain for most of the time. Can we expect more of the same through week two? As ever, at this range, it's all about trends and probabilities, not forecast specifics. Here's the GEFS 16 day plot for London. Air mass temperatures on the top half, and this week the signal is very clear indeed. Above average, the thick purple line, the ensemble mean, remains above the thick black line, the 30 year norm, throughout the second week. Rainfall. Well, not many spikes showing there along the bottom part of the plot. There are a few, so it's not completely dry, but certainly not a wet outlook. Snow, I think the signal here is extremely clear. The snow row there reaches a maximum of one out of 33. Virtually no chance if this is correct. Now, a few people have asked me why I use the GEFS data instead of the ECM. There are two basic reasons. Firstly, the full ECM data sets were not available to me until very recently. And secondly, even though that they now are, the difference in accuracy between the two is a lot less than I think some people perceive it to be. ECM is considered to be somewhat better than GEFS, but at the ranges that I'm looking at here, days 8 to 16 primarily, those differences are marginal. And just to illustrate that, here's the ECM update for the same period. Um, air mass temperatures are showing a very similar profile to the GEFS chart, staying above the 30-year average throughout the second week of the forecast period. No significant differences there at all. Back to the GEFS and up to Glasgow. This time the air mass temperatures are closer to the 30 year norm. There's more variance here, some colder runs into the mix, but take them all together. It's a very average picture, probably slightly above it. Rainfall, there are more spikes than the were on the London plot, an ongoing risk of rain therefore, and the snow row here 
reaches a maximum of four, uh, five actually, just on the last day there. But still, that's a low chance of snow, just a little bit higher than in southern England. I don't think it's something to worry about, particularly if this data is correct. Two metre temperatures, so the data table for London, mostly yellows, 11 to 15 Celsius, and some of the orange starting to appear. Those indicate runs going for maximums of between 16 and 20 Celsius. So relatively warm rather than mild, increasingly becoming a possibility on some days at least. Up to Glasgow, light greens are dominant in the columns, 6 to 10 Celsius. But there is some yellow there as well, 11 to 15. Again, just reinforcing that general scenario of it being cooler but not cold as you head further northwest. The mean surface level pressure data table for York, quite an interesting update here because there is a signal for higher than average pressure, yellows, 1,011 to 1,025 millibars, and the oranges, 1,026 to 1,040 pointing towards that area of high pressure to the east of the UK, having a significant amount of influence. The mean uh, surface level pressure pot plot for Friday the 18th of March also supports that general scenario. We can see high pressure there to the east of the UK, to the south as well, with the Atlantic flow being pushed further to our northwest. The European ECM shows a similar scenario, high pressure having significant influence in central and eastern Britain, more of an Atlantic flow in the northwest, so that's where the wettest conditions would be. Final chart is the pressure anomaly, one for days 10 to 15. A strong negative anomaly to the west, lower pressure than the norm, and a strong positive to the east, leaving the UK sandwiched between the two. And I think that just possibly adds a little bit of weight to the suggestion that I made earlier, that we could see some windy spells through this period with that tight pressure gradient, and just depend on the exact balance between the two blocks will have an impact. It will have an impact on how wet it becomes in central and eastern areas, perhaps that rain could extend further eastwards if the pressure blocks a little bit further uh, over the continent rather than closer to the UK. So to summarise the next two weeks, week one, it's a changeable scenario. It's driest in the east and wettest in the west. Windy at times, particularly in the west and the northwest. Temperatures often above the average, especially in the south. Week two, in many ways, it's a case of rinse and repeat. Changeable temperatures above the average, driest in the east, wettest in the west, an ongoing possibility of windy spells. So, there we have it. Quite a mixed picture, driest in the east, wettest in the west, often rather mild, and possibly the potential for some early spring warmth. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you did, then please remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons below. Thank you for watching now. Bye.